Hi Lawrence, how are you doing man? Uh, just getting a little final look through your track that you've uh, created here with the uh, longest row vocal. To be honest man, I think it is really, really good man. Um, you know, everything that they've been kind of saying over the over the weeks, you've really taken on board and you know, you've really uh, fine-tuned a lot of things here and uh, it's, it's definitely really, really good and uh, good to see. Just a couple of things. Um, I think that the master sounds really good. It's punchy. Um, it's sort of light and it's got a little bit of what to it as, as well. So, I mean, you had a really good mix to start with and then just a fine little bit of master in there. I think it's really, really come together. So, you know, you really add that little sheen uh, to the final part of the mix. Uh, arrangement wise, great as well. Um, you know, the few things that I did talk about last week, um, especially about the vocal, I see you've you know, you've taken the vocal back in at this section here and it's here as well and you kinda changed the outro. Again, really, really good man. Um I just want to get a little uh a little look through just to see if there's anything else I can really pick out from this track. But to be honest, um any of the little things I will be picking out is really nitpicking, to be honest with you. Um, because I think um, overall you've done an amazing job on this track. Um, so, as I say, like, the track's only going to get better from here on in. Um, we did have a listen to the uh, intro and stuff la last week and that. Really liked everything that, that happened there. Um, the sounds that you used, everything is, uh, is, is really, really cool. Just going to jump to this section here. Uh, we've got the little vocal parts. Very, very cool indeed. Um, I really like that little piece of vocal on there as well. I just wanted to get a listen to these stunts here again for a second. Yeah. Pretty cool. Opens up nicely there as well uh, with the vocal. So we're getting that uh, nice, nice, nice impact there as well. Whenever the, the track actually drops there. Really, really cool. Uh, Loving this little bit with the little vocal cuts as well. You know, you're leaving off the vocal to come in at this section. Uh, I think it all works really, really well. Now, only one little small thing for me here, and, and, and to be honest, like I said, I'm only really nitpicking here. I think those vocal snippets could have come up another little small bit. Uh, let me just maybe make that adjustment, just so you can hear. I think the vocal, they sort of like a fine line of the vocals sitting just on top of the mix, but everything's still sounding as one. And then the vocal just being a little bit too um, low in the mix. And uh, I think it's just slightly low in the mix. I just want to hear this little vocal snip was coming. I think the main vocal as well here is a little bit low as well. Maybe I might need a bit of an extra uh, automation through the track with the vocal. Um, but I would probably just give it a little bit more. Let's hear, let's hear this. Okay, so you can hear whenever I jump back to this vocal here, um, even though you can see it, that's a lot lower in the mix, and I jump back to these vocal snippets again. You can see it just I just posted that a little bit more, but you can hear it within the track because there isn't as much going on in this section, and I jump into that section where there is more going on, um, where I'm going to give the vocal just a little bit of push just to come out through the mix a little bit, but you can see. Um, both of them sound like they're at the same volume whenever I'm bouncing back from this vocal to the little vocal snippets right here. 
So that mind. Now you can hear that that is just slightly sitting above the mix there, uh, but it's not too far away if the mix is just, just above, just sitting on top. Uh, but everything is still glued together and everything sounds like one. Um, now again, I think the main vocal definitely needs another little uh, smidgen of volume. So you can hear that there, just a the difference within that. Um, but let's just play along here and see, uh, does it need to be, you know, sometimes it's possible that the vocal actually might need to be automated throughout the track. You know, or if you have it at a uh, specific volume, it might be okay for that section, but then it might be too loud for another section where you might have to automate the volume just throughout that. Um, I think there's another, um, that would be a plug on waves, do you I think it's called vocal writer or something? This sort of takes care of this uh thing for you where you set like a um a certain amount of dB within the track and basically what it does it is that it just automates the volume for you just to make sure that that sits at that level throughout the track. Something you might want to uh, look into is uh called uh, vocal writer, I think is the name of it. Uh waves actually do it. Um might be something for you to check out. But let's just see if the um you know if this if the vocal sits okay with the pads and stuff coming up. It's actually fine, it's been working out okay there actually because we've got two compressors on there handling everything with the variable release. So to me just that, that little section there is actually fine, you were kind of getting away. I thought maybe you might have to automate the vocal just in this little section here, it was too loud but actually it works out perfectly fine. And again we've got loads of impact coming in there as well here for this little section. with The vocal snippets again, I think it works out an absolute treat. So let's just move in a little bit more to the break here again.
think that's all great. There's only one thing for me there, maybe, what you could have done. And again, as I say, we're just back to sort of really nitpicking here. Um, just let me zoom in here a little bit. You've got the sweep kind of coming up here, but I think we could have maybe added in a few more risers just for that, just to give it that more sense of tension kind of coming in there. I mean, you've, everything is coming in there lovely. You know, everything is, uh, I suppose, done right. The the uh, T's are crossed and the I's are dotted kind of thing. Um, just like maybe just a couple of extra little risers to come in there. But uh, once the drop happens, absolutely lovely. Great drop. For a fact, it would do very well in the club there as well. Um, you know, uh, for sure. So I just want to hear this little last little section here. All great stuff. I think overall the track is really, really good. Uh, arrangement is good. I think you really tighten it up with uh, working a little bit more with the vocals, getting the main vocal in there where I think where it should be. Um, really make it in a main feature as well. So that was that's been pretty cool. Now let's just get a little look at the master fader here. So just gonna switch these off. Get a look at the first compressor, I suppose. Let's get to the main event, which is in round here. VCA compressor, very good. So we're, what we're looking for here is just a little bit of glue. I think maybe on the compressor, it still sounds pretty good, but to me you're getting a lot of gain reduction there um, on the compressor. It still sounds good. Uh, I think we're getting roughly, yeah, consistently roughly about about 5 dB of gain reduction. Usually um, with this type of thing, um, um, with having a little bit of glue actually on the uh, master fader, Usually we, we might only have it just sort of tickle. The compressor, I suppose, is the only real way I could describe it. So we're just, we might be getting, say, like maybe 1, 2 dB of game reduction. We're just looking for a slight bit of glue there, just to sort of glue the mix to, um, you know, start things off. Um, but again, that still sounds pretty nice there as well. But this is kind of really personal preference for me. If it sounds good, it is good. At the end of the day, always trust your ears. Um... So if it was me, I probably probably would have had like a, a a lower ratio there, maybe like a two to one or something, um, and then just kind of work off that. So it's only really just um, as I say again, tickling the compressor, so show you know, just put this going for a second. There we go, sorry, 1.2 to 1, uh, I always forget about these compressors, you've got a, an extra digit in there. But um, usually that's what I would have started off with there, so it's just, you can just see that it's just, just only um, hitting the compressor there. So we're getting a slight bit of game reduction. So the mix should breathe a little bit more, so you're not really squashing it right away, you're not really limiting your dynamic range, you're just you're just looking for a little bit of glue, just to pull everything together, because it's just the first compressor, you don't want it working too hard um, uh, for you. Uh, so let me just, I think, let me just pop that back. I think it was I forgot to take note on uh, exactly where it was, but I think it was maybe around about there. So let's move on to the next plug on here. I've got a little bit of overdrive. Let's just switch that on. Uh, let me just pop it up first. Very nice as well. It's subtle. 
it's not too much um as well as you know making too much distortion in there um i think that's turned out really nicely uh, I sort of wind up the mix and just add in a little bit, uh, just a few more harmonics into the uh, track there as well. So it's made it, uh, just made it a little bit more beefier as well. So I thought that worked out very, very nicely as well. Let's bring in the EQ here. See what's happening. Very good. I think the EQ settings is level there, so you just got like a slight dip and around the 500 here. Little boost here, little high shelf there as well. Sounds excellent, and to be honest with you, I think it uh, it really opens up the mix a little bit more. Gets rid of a little bit of the muddiness, the boxiness. Um, you know, definitely good job there. Maybe just something for thought as well. Sometimes I do this um, because if there's anything else happening below. I always, always usually do like a high pass at 20 hertz. There we go. 24 dB per octave, very good. Happy enough for that. Uh, sometimes whenever you're doing it, uh, there could be some sort of rumble and stuff going on down there. It, Basically, we wouldn't be able to hear it anyways, but there just might be some stuff going down in there. It could be interfering with any part of the mix, and also, you might be able to squeeze a little bit more headroom um, out of the track. It could be a dB or something, but that could make all the difference. So, I think with the settings on the EQ there, it sounds pretty cool. That's the only probably thing I would add an extra there. It's just a little uh, 20 hertz high pass, or even 40 hertz, depending on the track itself. Um, but usually 20, between 20 and 40, depending. Spreader, this here. Very good, just adds that little uh, top end, opens it up very, very nicely, and again. That's all good because um, you know you've sorted out your uh, your high pass here. So anything down below two hundred, this basically stays exactly where it is. Um, you don't want anything getting stereo down there, anyways, because you're just going to run into problems um, um, with kind of the bottom end. If you're struggling with the bottom end on a track, it's probably the hardest thing to get right. Like so, uh, it can be hard to hear down there, especially if you haven't got the right monitoring, etc. So. Um, Definitely keeping things in control down that uh, neck of the woods is very, very important. Again, nice little subtle spread. I think that's really cool. Worked out very, very nicely. So our last guy here, limiter. So hopefully this, this guy should bring us up, uh, make us that bit more louder. All good, Lawrence. I think uh, what you did here on the Master Fader um, is um, very, very nice. Like the uh, the way you um, structured everything on the Master Fader, a little bit of compression, adding a few harmonics in there, then the EQ after that, a little spreader, another limiter. Um, maybe another couple of things that you might want to think about. That was a nice little bit of colour there to add in with the overdrive. So even the first three, pretty cool. Uh, maybe then again after that, if you had to cut back just a little bit on the compressor, maybe put another one straight after the channel uh, EQ here, compress that, and then maybe put the spreader after that, and then the limiter, maybe just add that, maybe just that little something else to the track, but you know, it's food for thought, um, overall I think the track sounds really good. Uh, the mix is great, it's got nice height, width, depth, um, I think you've done an excellent job all together, so uh, well done man, um, I've really really enjoyed listening to the track, cheers dude.